All of those uh, folk here we have visited over these past 10 days have, um, have given to us really the same message. Uh, they have said to us sincerely and deeply, thank you so much for coming and being with us. Um, uh, they have said to us, uh, please hear our story uh, and please go home and tell others of our story uh, because so often we feel forgotten uh, and neglected. Part of the object of the exercise of this visit was that those who came from the uh, synods of the United Reformed Church could inform folk in their synods um, of the nature of the situation here following uh, their visit. There, there were concerns within the denomination about matters concerning Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Several resolutions were brought to uh, the 2016 assembly. There wasn't agreement and they were referred to a facilitation group which found the agreement of the assembly and that resolution included a request to provide for the synods and uh, local churches to be better informed about the situation here. On our first day we were in Bethlehem, we spent part of the morning visiting the uh, Church of the Nativity and went to visit Munter Isaac and hearing about the ministry of the Lutherans, particularly in Bethlehem. You would wish that the Western Church is silent uh, and it stays like this. In other words, if you're silent and leave us alone, maybe that's better. Because the Western Church is not silent, the Western Church is part of the problem. It's justifying this and it's funding this. Following our meeting with uh, Munter Isaac, we travelled to another part of the town of Bethlehem to the Dehesha refugee camp where we were given a tour of the camp uh, and we had the history and the, the background of the uh, refugee camp explained to us. Uh, we met with Nidal uh, Abu Zalouf, he explained the background to the Olive Tree Project and then Mohanad uh, took our group on uh, uh, on a tour of some of the uh, project's work. The work of the Joint Advocacy Initiative Olive Tree Project is Christian work. It seeks to support uh, local farmers uh, across the West Bank whose olive trees are frequently uprooted, destroyed by settlers. The work of the Olive Tree Project is to uh, replant trees where they've been uprooted or destroyed in order that the farming community can continue its work, uh, can uh, retain its land. Lawrence Moore has uh, been a, a key part of this visit. He has, on most days of the visit, led the group in Bible study at selected uh, sites about our following in the footsteps of the radical Jesus. He has talked to us about empire and how we as followers of Jesus walking in his way should, uh, should respond uh, in the face of empire. During this visit we've been alongside Palestinian people, Christians and Muslims, but mostly we have been listening to uh, members of the Indigenous Church here. They want us to understand their situation. They want us to share their story. Uh, they want not to be forgotten. Uh, they want local churches in the UK to respond. Their deepest desire is that that response uh, should be more folk coming to visit them, to be alongside them. Uh, they want for folk in the UK to understand more their situation uh, and how difficult it is uh, for them to live. They want our solidarity. They want our prayers to be informed prayers. And they want us to respond with generous hearts and minds. They want us to be 
peacemakers in, uh, in this very difficult uh, situation. Let us hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in Israel. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, as my London Marathon shoes that I'm wearing shake the dust of what the ancient Hebrews called Zion, I'm struck at the poignancy of this psalm of ascent, a song that the pilgrims sung as they made their trek to Jerusalem for the high festivals. It is obvious even then that people faced dangers reaching this sacred spot on which we and other URC pilgrims have been walking. The text is clear though. There is no distinction between chosen people and no good people, but between those who trust in God and those who seek to do fellow pilgrims harm. As our EasyJet flight reached Tel Aviv on Wednesday, I was struck at how calm the Mediterranean Sea looks from 20,000 feet in the air. The peace there is a stark contrast to what I might find on land, I thought. As we enter Jerusalem, the words of another Psalm of Ascent, Psalm 122, rushed through my mind. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. As the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Passing pristine, well-paved, modern Jerusalem, we enter a checkpoint to enter Bethlehem, just 10 kilometers south. Silence filled the bus as we saw segregation personified. Maybe it was the tiredness from the long flight, but the difference between the two cities is obvious. Rubbish compacted, it seems, in every corner in Bethlehem. Unfinished buildings which tell the story of government restrictions and years of violence inflicted on the community. Chaotic driving, constant honks of the horns, and near accidents, the result of few street lights or signs in Bethlehem. Certainly not as many street lights as you see in Israeli territory. In the evening, the sound of the call to Islamic prayer reminds me that I'm not in Kansas anymore. Even here, Palestinians speak of the difficulties visiting families, celebrating feast days, tending to emergencies due to restrictions placed upon them. Not even the Palestinian government can protect the people from being treated like second-class citizens in their own land. Yet, their own theological understanding of their land is not that they are a chosen people for this land, but that God is the owner of the land. The parallels between here and race relations in South Africa and the United States are very evident to all of us. As with my country and others, what is necessary is a revolution of what a fr friend of ours, Nidal, a leader of the Olive Tree Project here in, here in Israel, 
here in Palestine calls what he calls people moved by beautiful values. He said, for once we start speaking only politics and interests, there is no hope. Now we're in Jerusalem, earlier today on the Mount of Olives, as we heard a cacophony of human sounds of Lawrence Moore teaching over pilgrims from other nations singing and speaking the Lord's Prayer. From the distance, the call to Muslim afternoon prayer from the north, south, east, and west, it seemed, and birds chirping around the olive trees. It's an extraordinary experience. Not even a wall can partition us from God's presence. As the psalmist wrote, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Living God, you are indeed living amongst us in the messiness of our circumstances. You walk with us, turn us from pilgrims to children. May we have the good sense to follow your way of peace. May we never forget the circumstances of the most vulnerable. And may our understanding of who you are never be complicit in the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and wherever segregation and indifference reign. But Lord, lead us to sympathy, solidarity, and action. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.